What do you get when you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter? You get a pumpkin pie. And we will be using a lot of pi today as we look at the area of circles, and in some cases the circumference. And we'll also be looking at something new, which is the area of a regular polygon. All right, now let's go ahead and review where the area of a circle comes from. So first of all, I have a circle here, which I'm going to go ahead and straighten. Basically, I'm pulling off the circumference. And you should remember that the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. Now I'm going to dissect this circle into some segments, and I'm going to actually make quite a few, say 24 segments. Then I'm going to rearrange these pieces first by unrolling it. So here they come. Straighten it out. And then now I'm going to take these blue pieces and rotate them and mix them in with the red pieces. Now if you look at this, uh, the shape that we just made is a parallelogram, all right? Um, the smaller the pieces you get, the closer it gets to a rectangle. Now, what do we notice about the dimensions of this shape? If you look from here to here, the distance from the center of this circle to this line is the radius. And if I look at the, the base here, it is half of the circumference. So the height is r, and the base is half of 2 pi r, or pi r. Now how can I use this to find the area? Well, the area of a parallelogram is base times height, so I can take the height, time, the height r times pi r, and I'll get base times height, pi r times r, so I get pi r squared. So that is a quick review of where the uh, formula for the area of a circle comes from. Before we talk about the formula for the area of a regular polygon, it's helpful to take a look at something called the central angle. I've gone ahead and I've started with the very simplest polygon, a regular one, and that's an equilateral triangle, then a square, regular a pentagon, regular hexagon, skip the seven-sided one, and I jump to the regular octagon. Now if you look here, the, this shape that I make by connecting the center with two vertices two consecutive vertices, that means in a row, um, this makes a central angle. So on the triangle, the central angle is 120 degrees. Well, if I have three sides, I can say 3 times 120, pretend that's times, 120, is, uh, what is that, 360. All right, now for this square, the central angle is 90 degrees, but I can make four of these. Four times 90 is 360. Oh, I think we're starting to see a pattern. For this pentagon, the central angle I made was 5 uh, times 72 degrees. Well, when I multiply 5 times 72, I'm going to get 360. The central angle for the hexagon, when I measured it, was 60 degrees. And there are six of these that I can make. So if I go six times 60, I get 360. All right. And then last but not least, I made a 45 degree angle on the octagon, which has eight of these. And if I go eight times 45, I get 360. So you should see that it's fairly simple to find the central angle. The central angle is just 360, let's see if I can finish that there, 360, there's the central angle, equals 360 divided by n, where n is the number of sides. So 360 divided by 3 is 120, 360 divided by 4 is 90, 360 divided by 5 is 72. So that will make it easier to find the central angle when we're working with these, um, finding the areas of regular polygons. Now let's take a look at where the formula for the area of a uh, po regular polygon comes from. I'm just looking for my pen tool here for a second. All right, so if you'll notice, I went ahead and added an extra line here. These red lines represent the altitude of these different triangles. It has a special name. It's called the apothem. Apothem. Excuse my cursive, but it's actually easier to write with this in cursive. So anyways, 
if I look at this altitude, if I know this distance, and we tend to call it an A, and then if I know this distance here, then I could say that the area of that triangle is uh, one half times base times height. So for just right now, I'm going to call this S, the side. So the area of this triangle will be one half times, there's a half, base times height. So it'd be one half, and the base is, I'm just calling it the side, and the height is A. Well, um, if I want to find the total area of this thing, what I'm going to do is do three times the side. So I'm going to have one half times three sides times A. This would be for the total area of the whole regular polygon. Same idea here. If I went ahead and say I took this hexagon and I wanted to find the area, I'd still have the base times the height, using one half base times height for my formula. So I'd go one half, and my base here is the side, right? And my uh, height is A, the apothem. If I want the entire area for this, this would, I have eight of these, uh, I'm sorry, this is a hexagon, so I have six of these. So I'd have one half times six times the side times A. And for the octagon, I'd have one half times eight times the side length times the apothem. This leads us to the formula for the area of a regular polygon. Eight times the sides is just the perimeter. Okay, so if I go all the way around this thing, that's the perimeter. So the formula really is one half times the perimeter times the apothem. Same thing true for the hexagon. One half times the perimeter times the apothem. And that's where the formula on your math chart comes from.